I'm Ryan, this is my brother Daniel, and this is Rolls in the Family, and today we are reviewing Race for the Galaxy, a space-themed tableau-building card game for two to four players that plays in 30 to 60 minutes. And to give you our recommendation right up front, despite being released over 15 years ago, Race for the Galaxy remains one of the best quick-playing strategic games for those who enjoy hand management and card combos. And we just want to note that the pictures in this review may include cards from the first three expansions to the game, which we will touch on briefly later in this review. And as always, we've included a link down in the description so you can check out the game for yourself. But let's jump right into the review. Race for the Galaxy is a strategic card game of space exploration where you will be racing to settle new worlds, develop advanced technologies, and produce and ship goods as you build up your interstellar economy. Each round, all players will simultaneously select one of five phases to activate. The phases are then resolved in order, with each player taking the primary action of the phase they chose, as well as the weaker secondary action of the phases their opponents chose. These phases include exploring to get more cards into your hand, settling worlds and investing in developments, producing goods on your existing worlds, and consuming those goods for either cards or victory points. The game continues until either the 12th card has been played in a player's tab below or all of the victory point chips have been claimed. At the heart of Race for the Galaxy is a tight game of hand management where every card in your hand can be either played into your tab below or used as money to play other cards. With a hard hand limit of 10 cards, you are forced to make tough decisions about which cards to play and which to sacrifice to keep your strategy moving along. This is amplified by the fact that you aren't the only one picking which phases you will have the opportunity to activate. You may have been planning to save a specific card to play, but now your opponent activated the settle phase, and you have to decide. Do you throw away that card to get a more powerful world out sooner, or do you skip the action, choosing to hold the card at the expense of efficiency? The more you play, the more you realize that you can make educated guesses about which phase your opponents will pick based on their tableau. You may see that one opponent has no cards in their hand and no goods to sell, and it seems very likely that they will trigger Explore to draw some new cards. However, are you willing to risk activating a develop action that relies on you getting to Explore to have enough cards to pay for it? Trying to predict your opponent's selection tempts you with even greater efficiency, but often with the risk that an unexpected selection throws off your entire turn. But keeping an eye on your opponent isn't just about predicting phase selections. Equally important is understanding the pacing of the game and adjusting your strategy as necessary. The game is truly a race, and while the fastest player won't necessarily win, you don't want to get caught off guard with the game ending with your strategy half-baked. On the other hand, if you see that your opponent's strategy is going to take some time to develop, you might want to push the pace. Sometimes playing more quickly and for less points is the right decision if your score will still be higher than your opponent's. Over 95% of our plays of Race for the Galaxy have been with two players, which works beautifully. But three or four players can also be good, especially if all the players are experienced. The Gathering Storm expansion adds a solo mode, which is alright, And while the Gathering Storm and Rebel vs. Imperium expansions also add support for a 5th and 6th player, you are definitely pushing the envelope at those higher player counts. The theme of space technology and exploration is cool and informs a lot of the card abilities, but in practice, players end up just strategizing around the various card effects without any real connection to the theme. In any card game that has lots of blind draws from the deck, luck is going to play a significant factor. However, the mechanisms provide plenty of opportunity for skillful play, and high-level organized play is evidence of the fact that players can get really good at this game. While race is sometimes cited as an example of multiplayer solitaire, given the players working on their own tableaus, we believe there is more interaction than what meets the eye. You literally are affected by your opponent's phase selections every single turn, And the dynamic of racing to finish means that it is important to be aware of how your opponents are playing. Especially for its strategic weight, Race for the Galaxy has a very quick setup. Just give each player their phase selection cards in a random start world, and then shuffle and deal six cards to each player. The game has gained a reputation of being really hard to teach with difficult iconography, but we actually feel that is blown out of proportion. Most of the iconography is intuitive, and when it isn't, it is supplemented by text on the card. 
That said, if we're looking at the spectrum of all games, race still skews to being more difficult to teach, and it usually takes new players a few plays to get a feel for the pacing and the strategy. Each game of Race for the Galaxy is going to present you with a unique combination of a starting world and six additional cards, of which you get to keep four. This, combined with a shuffled deck that is going to constantly feed you a new unique combination of options, makes the variability from game to game quite high. Every hand of cards you encounter in Race is a unique puzzle with many ways that you could approach playing it out. And it is a puzzle that is constantly being morphed by new cards that you acquire from the deck. The result is a decision space that never grows old even after hundreds of plays. Usually strategic depth correlates strongly to longer play time, but Race for the Galaxy manages to be an exception. We are hard pressed to think of other games that set up in minutes, can play in a half hour, and yet leave you feeling like you had a deep strategic experience with an abundance of interesting decisions. While the hand management puzzle is satisfying in and of itself, it is the way that it feeds into an engine building game with escalating power that gives each game a nice arc and makes the decisions that much more rich. With so many different card abilities, you will always be running across combos that you have never used before. And while we won't go into detail on expansions in this review, it truly is a strength of the game that, if you like it, there is some awesome additional content available for you to mix in, spicing up the game with new abilities and amplifying all of the game's strengths that stem from card variety. A big reason why so much strategy can be packed into such a short playing time is because players select and execute the phases simultaneously. Instead of a 90-minute game where 60 minutes are spent on other players' turns, Race for the Galaxy has all players engaged for almost the entirety of the game length. When a game is a race where the end game is triggered by the fastest player, there's always the chance that players feel they didn't have enough time to execute on their strategy, particularly when a player has a strong military strategy that enables them to play military worlds at no cost the game can often speed to a finish that is less than satisfying. Similarly, despite there being so many ways to mitigate the luck of the draw, there are times where a player just gets all the perfect cards and leaves their opponents with no chance. It's the price you pay for all of the interesting decisions and fun factor that come from random card draw, but you can expect there will be the occasional game where luck swings far enough to actually detract from the experience. And now let's get to our final ratings for Race for the Galaxy. So I feel like any game that you play like us uh, over 300 times uh, kind of speaks for itself. You know, the game must not be terrible. No, it's terrible. <laughs> you know, we punish ourselves. <laughs> it was, it was actually a yeah, punishment in our household. No, this is a, a game that we clearly enjoy. I think you can tell just by the play count. Um, and I'm going to be giving Race for the Galaxy an 8.5 out of 10. Uh the game, you know, I think what was so cool about it for, I mean, to be honest with the people here, 99% of my plays were just with you. You know, this is like a yeah. core part of our childhood. It's one of the early games we got. But every time you play it, as the name says, it really does uh, feel like a race, even just in the pacing of the game. You know, it... uh the with the simultaneous play it's just fast moving you know you just you select the cards you play the phases you resolve and then you just you you're like i'm i find whenever i have to wait on you it's like i'm like dry, going crazy or something like that because i'm the game just moves yeah. and moves and moves and it's done in 30 minutes and yet you know like we mentioned it feels like you did a lot um i and so you know it's one of those things that uh, it, looking for that kind of a deeper strategy of there's so many cards i mean and and we have i i think do we have all the expansions we have all the like the original arc they made like some other expansions that are like you're supposed to use them separately from the other expansions but we just like mixing everything in right yeah so we we mix everything in and and i'll be i'll be honest there's some of the things in the expansions that we you know, i personally haven't been huge on like uh, there was the uh uh personally the you know we always played with those extra goals and and they can be good mm -hmm. but i don't know i was a little iffy about them and there's it's not like necessary it's not necessary and so honestly the expansions if nothing else just add 
more variety, more cards, more goodness. And yeah, it's a game that uh, unfortunately yeah. it is uh, has been given into your collection, uh, although I wouldn't have anyone to play it with it because honestly, I yeah. tried it with my wife and uh, she didn't really like it. The iconography was a lot. And also, if, to be honest, if you're playing with someone who's experienced, there is a large skill gap because there really is kind of a, you really have to figure out the, I mean, this whole kind of, okay, playing cards versus which ones am I going to spend, the pacing of the game, yeah. kind of what are the conventional strategies you're, you're trying to do. So I think there's a little... Or even just like awareness of what cards are in the deck. Like we know one. like these six point developments exist that like, yeah. or like if I get this six point development, I kind of know how to build a strategy around it if I go after it. Yeah. But yeah, a, a 300 play uh, difference in <laughs> you and your opponent is going to show and make I it hard. It yeah. yeah. And, and uh, the last thing with that is even just kind of being able to see what your opponent might do. I think you get a lot better at that mm -hmm. the more you play it. So I'm giving it an 8.5. Yeah. Ryan, what do you got? Yeah, so it, it is funny, like, because we've played almost exclusively two player, mm -hmm. but then people are shocked to find out that those 300 some plays of two player, we actually didn't start using the advanced two player variant, which is like the recommended right. way to play with two players, which is where you get to select two phases instead of Blew one. Blew my mind. Which I think for us, yeah, <laughs> for us, it was just like a, if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of thing. If we were having so much fun playing the game, it never really occurred to us, like, we need to change it. That said, we did come back to it and play that recently, and I think we both now have landed at the point that, like, yeah, I think if we're going to play it with the two of us in the future, we'll probably play that way. It's just so funny that, you know, clearly it didn't bother us for 300 plays. <laughs> it's very hard to, be it's very hard to that. change after doing it for 300 times. It, was, it, took, a, it yeah, took me a little bit, but I, I think I'm okay with it now. Yeah. Yeah, so I, you know, the more I thought about it, like race of the galaxy has just been such a staple and we don't get to play it nearly as much as we used to. We went through a phase where it was getting pulled out really regularly. We were to the point where we were sitting down for an hour and playing three games in an hour. And when you think of like what goes into a game of race of the galaxy to be playing in 20 minutes, which is really where we are at now. Like yeah. most people probably aren't going to hit that time until you play it quite a bit. I cannot think of a game that gives me the same level of like satisfying, interesting decisions in that short of a right. playing time. And so it's kind of just this comfort food thing. I'm going to come in at a nine out of 10. Okay. It's been one that has, I mean, we got it in 2009. Yeah. I mean, one of the, one I mean, of it's the an first older game. five games, I think. And it, I mean, it's one of those. Yeah. Early it ones. was very early on us kind of discovering modern board games. And I think it, <laughs> I think up front it was like, okay, what? I think it was a little intimidating at first because we really hadn't played much like it. But man, did it become a staple for us? And it hasn't gotten down for no. me. Like, I'm looking at it now and it's like, it's a nine out of 10. Talking about it makes me want to play it because I, I don't love get to, do to play it, right it that often. Uh, yeah. And it's, you know, so quick, a nice filler at the end of the night. It is a game that rewards what we've done with it, which is experienced play and like playing with other people who are experienced. Like that's where you're going to get the most out of this game. But if you want a game that you can keep playing and playing and playing yeah. and like it's not going to get old and it's only going to reward you more, like that's what Race of the Galaxy is, has been for us. And so, yeah. P pretty high ratings from us as if our if our play counts were not enough to endorse it. <laughs> Hopefully our ratings uh, show how much we enjoy Absolutely. this game. But ultimately, we want to, you know, help you determine is Race of the Galaxy the right game for you? If you don't want a game with lots of iconography, don't like having your strategy rushed because of other players, or don't enjoy weighing the trade-offs of a bunch of different interacting card effects, Race for the Galaxy may not fit the bill. But if you want a lot of meaningful strategy packed into a short playing time, enjoy building up a tableau of abilities that result in escalating efficiency, and you want a game that is going to remain compelling even after hundreds of plays, Race of the Galaxy is fantastic. And there is a reason we've played it over 300 times. If you're interested in checking out Race for the Galaxy for yourself, we've got a link to it down below. Otherwise, we've got a couple videos right here, and we will see you guys in the next video.